most beautifully written pieces in world literature. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doeth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. We have a whole lot of lying Christians in the church today, but we all have the sin that so easily besets us. Every last one of us, I don't care how spiritual you look, how holy you think you are. We all have that uh, besetting sin, that the sin. It may not beset us anymore, but it's, it's, it's right there. If we somehow lost our minds, if we somehow uh, forgot about God's chastening hand, if we're not uh, on God, we can easily slip into and that goes for everybody makes no difference who you are and I am I am up to here with lying Christians and then all of a sudden in two weeks you're divorcing your wife and your husband because you've been in a 12 year relationship with the deacon's wife or somebody's husband somebody needs to tell the truth let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do have so easily beset us <clears throat> and let us run with patience the race that is set before us by the way you can gain some ground if you are patient if you run the race with patience. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. If you've been listening to this series, you know all about that now or you understand it at least, for consider him that endured such contradiction, such opposition of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Holy Father God in heaven, we praise you and we thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your love and your mercy and your grace and help us always to be a people who pray what we mean and mean what we pray and that we just don't uh, uh, say words because we're used to saying them and so holy father god help everybody to pray and mean it we praise you and we thank you for this past day, what a day it has been. It's been a tough day, but Lord, we thank you for bringing us through it. And Lord, we pray for the families that are going through even tougher times than we are. Lord, they're losing lifelong loved ones and uh, suffering in the hospital. And Lord, you know who they are. Some are losing children. Comfort them as only you can so that they can continue to run this race with patience. We individually and collectively. And Lord, if there ever was a night for us to do it, we need to do it tonight, and that is confess our sin, the sin, our weakness, our temptation, or the sin that so easily besets us. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive us of our sins give us the grace and the power of your Holy Spirit to repent of our sins, to turn 
from our evil ways. So Lord, uh, we know that you're not going to move with genuine revival and power until we deal with the sin issue. And Lord, we want to, in this uh, church today, uh, live in sin, violate your word, and still uh, expect you to bless us and uh, to uh, move mightily in our midst. And, uh, and we know, Lord, if we read our Bible, you're not going to do that. And so, Lord, help us to pray, to seek your face, to turn from our wicked ways, and to humble ourselves. And we pray tonight, once again, that you'd cast out the devil and his demons and his hosts and the satanic, demonic spirit of Judas, betrayal, and sabotage, and sandballing out of the lives of people who have that in their in their spirit, in their lives, whether they know it or not. And Lord, I do pray that you will rebuke and bind of the devil, his demons, and his host from this message tonight, for it is a message that is not often preached anymore, as you know. <clears throat> you came, John the Baptist came preaching against sin, preaching repentance, and we don't hear that at all today. Uh, Holly for most preachers, most pastors, and uh, we're constantly trying to accommodate wicked, evil people, and uh, instead of rebuke them for their sins. So Lord, have mercy and grace upon all of us as preachers, and help us to repent as we deal with unhitching from sin tonight. Grant us your grace and the power of your Holy Spirit to do it in the way that you want us to do it, in the way that you want me to do it. Glorify your holy name, lift up your holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Save those who are lost, revive those who are saved, and help all of us to unhitch from sin. For if we do, I believe the power will come down again. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. John Piper said, Sinning is any feeling, any feeling any emotion, any thought or speech or action that comes from a heart that does not treasure God, that does not appreciate God, that does not love God. You're messing up when you don't love God. That's a sin right there. When you don't appreciate God. Over all other things. Allow me to repeat that, see. Because here's where we're living at, right here. We hear a whole lot of preaching today. Nobody. Hardly anybody is talking about the sin problem in the church. I mean, I'm not talking about the sin problem with President Trump. I'm not talking about the sin problem with the politicians. We knew they were liars when we put them in office. I'm not talking about the sin problem in the street, man, where people are killing babies, drive-by shootings. The problem in America is not the sin of the sinner man. The problem in America, beloved, is our sin in the church. But we're good at deflecting, projecting, and in, 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 in a slick sort of way, trying to put it on everybody else but us. The biggest problem in America are preachers, pastors, and 
And I thank God for all of my pastor brethren. And I'll say this to you. Dear friend, if you do not have a pastor, I mean a, a, a genuine God-called pastor, there's nothing more valuable in your life other than a prophet, but I'm not talking about that tonight. But you need a prophet too, every now and then. But a pastor will help you get through some things. They have a gift for it. They know how to do it. A good pastor now. Somebody who is sincere, who sincerely loves Jesus. But the biggest problem, however, in our country our pastors leading churches and preachers traveling about preaching but not living what they should be what they are preaching and then not preaching what they should be preaching to the people the Bible tells preachers to cry aloud and spare not and show my people their sin. Because sin, if you read the Bible, sin is the problem from the beginning to the end. Sin, seriously. Sin is a bad boy, man. It's deeper than what you know. It's, and it's amazing that we don't hear much preaching about that today. Sinning is any feeling or thought. See, I got to deal with this right here because some of y'all think that because you don't sin outwardly that you're not saying some of you listen to me some of you on the inside you know you're a devil I can tell right now I'm not gonna be able to finish this tonight I said that on the inside you know you're a devil nobody else can see it like but you know it. You're mean as the devil on the inside. Little uh, wicked remarks. Real, and you can say them real fast. Faster than your husband can respond. He's given up. Because he, you have 4,000 words up on him already that he can't even, he hasn't even respond. Responded to, he can't. You say it so fast, so slow, you cut him you know, like a, a little dagger, just cut him real quick. Ow! He, he's bleeding. Real fast, like. And you, you send him off to his little man cave that you decorated. You can go in his man cave anytime you want to, anytime. But he can never go into your she shed. Me. See, some of y'all, listen, you, 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 let me tell you something. I told you this before. You can fool some of the people, some of the time. You can't fool all the people all the time. And you certainly can't fool genuine, old school church folk. Listen to me. There's some folk that you don't want to deal with because they'll look at you. Okay? They will not say anything. But in their mind, all kinds of things are popping off. He's a phony. He's a Jezebel. He's whorish. She's a whore. They'll never say that to you, to your face. But they see you coming in the church. But you think you're slick. But they can see right through you. Because some of you know that you're wicked as the devil on the inside. You're mean and hateful to your family members and to your uh, children. But you love everybody at the church. You speak well of everybody else, but you you have nothing good to say about your own family. God does not like ugly. You know that. But you keep on being that way. You 
they said a long time ago is still true, charity begins at home. I'm dealing with what's, what the real deal is here. Because uh, we got a whole lot of folk who can do church. They can, they can do church, but they can't do home. Passing like two ships in the night. Because both parties are mean as the devil and are, and are hypocrites. She's got her team, he's got his team, and they gossip about their own husband and wife all day. But you won't revive in the church. That's not happening, Captain. So Dr. John Piper said, sinning is any feeling or thought. Some of y'all got bad attitudes, evil attitudes. You think that you can get away with that. Just as long as you don't commit fornication, as long as you don't do drugs, as long as you don't get drunk. These attitudes got to be dealt with. And only God and you can deal with it. They're sinful. That's, that's right. I said it. You, you can have a sinful attitude deep down on the inside. Your attitude stinks. And <clears throat> sometimes it seeps out. You try you try to keep it hidden and boxed up around other people, you know, church folk. You liar. But it comes out all over the place. Why is it that you can you can act so sweet and dainty and so wonderful at church, you hypocrite? You you lying hypocrite. You get around the church folk, you smile with your little fake smile. You just acting so sweet and so wonderful and you're laughing with people you don't even know, but you can't laugh with your husband, you can't laugh with your children, you can't laugh with your wife. There's no laughing. There's no smiling. You sinning hypocrite. So this is what the church needs to hear. You're fake, you're phony, and you need to repent. You need to confess your sins and repent. He goes on to say, sinning is any feeling or thought or speech or action that comes from a heart that does not treasure God, does not love God does not appreciate God. God is not first. See, if you got all that going on with God, then you're not going to be, you know, doing your besetting sin. You're not going to continue on with a bad attitude and a hateful attitude towards family members for 15, 20, 30 years. No, no, no. Something is wrong somewhere. You need to examine yourself, my beloved, to see whether or not you be in the faith. We're talking about unhitching from sin. We finally got there. He said, oh, no, I'll never come and listen to this man again. I got you right now. Okay, that's all. It's, uh, you know, I'll get you tonight. You don't have to come back. I'm going to tell you all about it right now. God over all other things. You must love God above everything, my dear friend. Jesus Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandments. <clears throat> I asked Alexa. I said, Alexa, uh, I said, uh, read me something from C.S. Lewis. She said, oh, you want something from the Bible? Here you go. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commands. I said, all righty then. I said, all right, Alexa. You, you might, you're not too far from the kingdom. I said, all right. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commands. Obey me. And do you know that's the test for everybody in any relationship? If you love God, if you love Jesus, 
truly you will obey them? Have you ever asked anybody? Uh, do you love God? And you know they're in sin. Yet they claim to be a Christian. Have you ever asked anybody that? What, 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 what do they say? Oh, yes! And, 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 I, and here's what I say. Now, some of you loving pastors, you won't say this. I say, you're a liar to hell. I say, you are a liar out of hell. Because if you love Jesus, you wouldn't be doing what you're doing. And the bottom of sin, the root of all sinning, he said, is such a heart, a heart that prefers anything above God, a heart that does not treasure God over all other persons and all other things. How are we doing? We need to deal with the sin issue in the church. Judgment must begin at the house of God, my beloved. We have a whole lot of activity going on. We got comedians coming to the church for I don't know why. Uh, can you imagine the church fathers going to a church service to listen to a comedian? A joker? Can you imagine Jerome? Chrysostom? Paul? Gathering for a comedy show in the church? We got a whole lot going on today, but a whole lot of sin going on with it. And watch this it's destroying your life and it's destroying the church you're in. Now the true church is going to march on. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. Uh, but if you're not a part of the true church, then you won't be marching on. And some of you need to examine yourself and see whether or not you be in the faith. Many preachers need to examine themselves. Your mama called you. Your daddy said he wanted you to be a preacher like him. And they force you to be a preacher. Somebody said you got a head like a preacher and all such foolishness. And you, you, you're not even born again, much less called. And Dr. Tim Keller said these beautiful words. Every one of our sinful actions has a suicidal power on the faculties that put that action forth. When you sin with the mind, when you sin with the mind, that sin shrivels the rationality. I believe this. When you sin with the heart or the emotion, sin one prophet said, will make you stupid. Sin is a bad boy. But when you sin with your emotions, that sin shrivels the emotions. You say, well, preacher, how can I sin with my emotions? Some of you folk getting all caught up with people that God never intended for you to be with <clears throat> that's a trap you get hooked on to something either it's the sex or the conversation or he just makes you feel so good and you get hooked bait hooks you and that hook is in you your emotions are all tied up and messed up. You'll lose your money, your job, your looks, your house over a Negro. 
And I don't care if you're white, black, red, or you're all Negroes or Negroes. Thousands have done so because of how good he makes me feel or how good she makes me feel. It goes both ways. And you're really messed up if it's a he-he and a she-she. You got double the problems. And you're sinning with your emotions. When your emotions ought to be directed towards God and loving Him and obeying Him and adoring Him and praying to Him without ceasing, reading His Word every day, all the way through, every year, or concentrating on certain passages, the ones that deal with your besetting sin. When you sin with the will, when you choose to sin, you, you calculate and you make up your mind that you're going to do it. And by the way, some of you women don't know, all men don't know, <clears throat> that once a woman says she's going to do it, it's going to be done. That devilish joker might have been working on her for about a year on the job, slowly but surely. But, but when she makes up her mind that she's going to go ahead and do the terrible thing, the bad thing, she's going to do it. It's going to be done. You don't have to persuade nobody at that point. And devilish men are always ready to sin against God in that regard, even in the church. So watch out, Christian young ladies. There's some uh, dogs in the church, and they're seeking to tear you apart. But Keller goes on to say, when you sin with the will, that sin destroys and dissolves your willpower and your self-control. What? It, sin messes you up. One prophet said, sin makes you stupid. I didn't say it. He said it. Don't get mad at me. Well, you don't have to say it like that. Don't say it like that. Well, no, 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 no. Don't no, tell me how to preach. You, you need to confess your sin. You, you, uh, I, that makes me feel so bad. You probably need to feel bad. You're evil. You're rebellious. You're stubborn. You think you're slick. Out there sitting on the front porch, talking to somebody on the phone, wrapped up with a little uh, uh, sweater. And it's 50 degrees outside because you don't want nobody in your house to hear who you're talking to. <clears throat> God gave you a house to talk to people in. Not sitting outside in the backyard. You got to take your phone outside. That's evil. Why are you always talking with somebody in the parking lot? That's not your town. Not your city. You think you're slick. But God sees you. Sin, he says, and only deep minds can come up with stuff like this, but it's so true. Dr. Keller says, sin is the suicidal action of the self against itself. What? I don't want to close, but I'm going to have to close. I'm on the Daniel fast and I'm not eating what I want to eat because I got to eat something. Been gone all day. I got to have some time of relaxation. I know you all, all want me to preach all night. I can't do it. Allow me to repeat that in your hearing, my beloved. Dr. Keller said, Sin is the suicidal action of the self against it's my God. what? See, he didn't get that from all the books he's studied, all all the books he wrote. <laughs> he's written. Oh no, 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 no. He got that from God. He probably didn't even know what he said when he said it. But sin is suicidal. That's how powerful sin is. Go ahead. You think you can get you think you can get you can get away with sin? Go and try. 
you born again child of God, I guarantee you. God's got some news for you. God's got something for you down at the woodshed. Oh, oh, oh yes. <laughs> yes, he does. I don't care who you think you is. What? I'm Dr. Sean. I don't care. I care less. Look at beautiful, uh, how beautiful I am. Me? Being chastised by God? Yes, you. Young lady, beautiful lady, I was dating in Bible college. She came down to my job. And, like she really loved me because she came to my job on a Friday evening. And uh, she did one of these numbers, you know, touched my nose and said, uh, See, I'm so beautiful and so pretty that even if you got mad at me, you wouldn't even do anything in that right. I said, no, no, I don't know where you got that from. We're all beautiful in God's sight. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you, you, you cross God, just read your Bible. What? What's wrong? Read your Bible. Read it. Read it this year. God does not play man. And all Christians over, let's say, 20, 30 years old, we all know that God is not perfect. We, and some pastors, they'll just go ahead and uh, listen to your little mess because they want, they know you want them to agree with you. And some pastors, like Dr. John Manuel Jr., they'll shake their head. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and just turn you over to God because it's not going to work. I have to go. Sin is the suicidal action of the self against itself. Sin destroys freedom. My God. This is so true. Sin destroys freedom. You will lose your freedom. You keep sinning against God. I don't care who you are. The president the governor, the mayor. There's a governor in jail up in Illinois right now, been there for about 10 years. Sin will cause you to lose your freedom. See, you say, well, preacher, why won't you do certain things? Because I like being blessed. <laughs> I like the liberty that God gives me. I like the freedom to do some things. I, I like enjoying life. And God has shown me in no uncertain way in his economy, doing what you want to do is not going to work as his child. He, listen to me. I don't have to, I don't even have to look at you. I know, I, I, I know there's probably a thousand folks watching right now somewhere. I don't even have to see your head nodding because you have learned the hard way like me that God does not play and he will help you to understand that he's in charge. Now, I, I have I bought you with a price with my own son's blood. You're going to do it my way or no way. And he's very loving about it and he's very patient, very long suffering. But if you push him and you don't take advantage of your space to repent. He's going to get you. He's going to deal with you. And and like the old saints used to say. Don't get God started. Started. And I'm going to add on you. Because one of the most painful things. About God being getting started on you. My dear friend. Is that it's going to be a long time. Because some of us, we react in the, in, in the wrong way. We start lying, so I'm going through a trial, pray for me. No, God's whipping your behind. And you know it. And you know why. Oh, I can't get many amens in the house of God. Amen, lights. Oh, yes. Sin destroys freedom. Because sin is an enslaving Sin is an enslaving 
sin is an enslaving power. My beloved, I have so much more to say to you. I have not even dealt with the scriptures yet. Uh, but I think you got the point tonight. You need to get sin out of your life. You need to unhitch from your sin. That, that's going to mean unhitching. I don't care how fine she is. You got to find some kind of way. You might even have to get in your car and just leave town and tell nobody. And, and, and here's what you need to do with your cell phone. Get your hammer. God bless your heart. You know, what? Get your hammer. Get you a, a sledgehammer. You don't have to buy one. Go buy one of these mechanics over here. They'll let you use it. And just beat the hell out of it. Crush it down to nothing. Put it in a bag and throw it in a trash can that nobody knows. You got to do that. That's number one. Then you can escape. You can get, <laughs> you can get in your car and go. Okay, because some, some, listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very carefully. There's some people who can get a hold of you. There's, there's some women, they have a certain power. Megan might have some of this power. Princess Megan, I think she has some of it. And, 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 and I can't tell you what we used to call it, but you know. Uh, there's some women who have a power. They know they have a power over men. There's some men who have power over women. It's like they put a spell on you. And you, can, and, if, and you need God's help to break it. Am I talking to somebody tonight? I believe I am. Let's all stand for our closing prayer. Uh, for prayer. Because we need prayer. Holy Father God in heaven, I give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. And I thank you, Lord, for dealing with the problem of sin in our lives from Genesis to Revelation. Have mercy and grace upon us as preachers and forgive us of our sin of not preaching against sin in the church. Forgive us of our sin of, of, of not crying loud and sparing not and showing people, our, your people, their sin. Help us to all confess our sins tonight. Help us to all repent of our sins and return from our evil ways. And Lord, uh, just like you have dealt with people throughout your holy scriptures about their sin, you also was quick to forgive if they repented. You were quick to bless them again and to show them grace and mercy, and you have done the same with us through your holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't understand it all, but we thank you for it all. We thank you for your system of grace. Now, Lord God in heaven, we pray that you will save those who are lost in trespasses and sins. Open their blinded eyes tonight, unstop deaf ears, and save their souls as they hear the gospel. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray and for sake. Amen. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I have been primarily preaching to saints, people who are already saved or they think they're already saved, but I have instructed them to examine themselves to see whether or not they be in the faith. Uh, if sin does not bother you, if you're thinking about the party uh, that you're going to go to right after this church service, uh, and uh, that, that does not bother you. Uh, if you're thinking about uh, who you're going to hook up with <coughs> and have sex with tonight, and that and you're planning it, and it does not phase you, it does not bother you, you don't feel good, you're probably, no doubt, you're, you're, you're not born again, you're not saved. 
because people who are truly saved and born again uh, is going to be a, that's going to be a problem inside on deep on the inside so you know that's, that's one way to examine yourself and so if you're with us tonight and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior in the free pardon of your sins allow me to show you how you can place your faith and trust in him for salvation from the power of sin and the punishment of sin which is eternal hell the burning hell first accept the fact dear friend that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's laws you have broken God's Ten Commandments and so have I the Ten Commandments are universal not just for the Jews for everybody and so is the gospel is universal not just for the Jews but everybody the Bible says in Romans 3 23 for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God you know you have sinned I have sinned you know you have done wrong and I have done wrong and so has the Pope so has Joel Osteen so has the Dalai Lama and all of the other religious figures and if they're honest they'll admit it we have sinned against God we have failed second accept the fact that there is a penalty there is a punishment for sin the Holy Bible states in Romans 6 23 for the wages of sin is death <clears throat> we die physically we're going to die I'm, I'm going to die I'm dying right now and you're dying you need to face this reality I don't know why we as humans think we're going to live forever on this earth and we're not and why would we want to one year old boy got killed the other night sleeping in his bed that's pain that is unimaginable for a long long time we're all going to die our bodies are going to go to the grave my dear friends or you may choose to be cremated, whatever, you're going to die. The Bible says it is appointed unto men once to die, and after that, the judgment. Your soul, if you have never believed on Christ, will go to hell. Jesus Christ himself preached more on hell than anybody in the Bible. Jesus Christ preached more on hell in the Bible than most preachers living today jesus christ preached more on hell than he did about heaven why because he loves us and he does not want us to die and go to hell that's why he died for our sins was buried and rose on the third day so accept the fact dear friend that you are on the road to hell right now if you cannot remember time you trusted Christ or believed on Christ as Savior I'm not talking about church membership I'm not talking about getting baptized I'm not talking about uh, helping somebody across the street I'm not talking about giving any money to the church I'm not talking about going to your church the two Sundays you go Easter and Christmas I'm not talking about any of that any kind of works uh, or anything like that simply realizing that you are a sinner and that Jesus Christ died for your sins was buried and rose on the third day and you believed on him Jesus Christ said in Matthew 18 8 wherefore if thy hand or thy foot offend thee cut them off and cast them from thee it is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed that means basically messed up your legs cut off your hands cut off and so forth rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire and that's how serious the matter of hell is Jesus does not want you to go to hell so you need to trust Christ as Savior and repent of your sins 
hell is a real place, just like New York City is a place. The saddest aspect of hell, however, is that once you go there, you can't get out. Can you imagine being in a dark place where there's fire and brimstone and embers constantly burning, constant smoke, no water for your parched tongue, agonizing memories of family members who tried to tell you about Jesus and you, and you joked about them and said nasty things about them. Or you will, you will remember all of the times you could have gotten saved. You almost got saved. You were almost persuaded to become a Christian. <clears throat> Hell is an awful place. Heaven is a wonderful place. So get saved today from hell and get saved to heaven. Hell is bad news, but I have some good news. You don't have to go to hell. You can go to heaven through believing on Jesus Christ. What Jesus Christ said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world, that includes you. <clears throat> you can't go around saying, Well, I know God does not love me, all the evil things I did. God loves you. For God so loved the world, that includes you that he gave his only begotten son his name is Jesus Christ that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life just believe in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ that he died for your sins was buried and rose from the dead by the power of God for you and for me and for everybody Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and let him save your soul and change your destination and change your life, even in this world. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today to save your soul, and he will. He'll save you. If he, if, if he saved me, he can save you. Believe me, I don't have the time to tell you the whole story. But believe this, Romans 10, 9 and 13 says that if thou, that if you shall confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou you shall be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell. Saved to what? Saved to heaven and, and saved to a new life on earth. So if you're willing in your heart to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose on the third day. Pray and ask him. Call upon him with your voice and ask him to save you. And somebody help me to pray that first prayer, and I'll be glad to help you. Just follow me in prayer. Mean it from your heart. Repeat after me, phrase by phrase. I'll wait for you. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and that I deserve to go to hell, for I have lied in your sight. I've stolen things in your sight. I have coveted after people and things in your sight, in my heart. And I have lusted after people and things in my heart and in my mind. I have taken your holy name in vain. And I have dishonored my parents and disobeyed my parents. For Jesus Christ's sake, please have mercy and grace upon my soul. And Please forgive me of all of my sins, as I now believe with all of my heart in the Lord Jesus Christ. Who died for my sins. As the sacrificial lamb of God, who took away the sins of the entire world, 
Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of my sins past and to turn from my evil ways and my evil life to follow you in the new life. Lord Jesus, thank you for saving my soul. Amen. And dear friend of mine, if you believed in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose from the dead, Allow me to say congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ Jesus, please go to GospelLightSociety.com and read my pamphlet titled, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. Dear friend, if you have trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, tonight, or wherever you are, please email me at dw3 at gospellightsociety.com and let us know. We have some free material that we want to send you immediately uh, to help you to grow in the faith. If you have a prayer request, please email that to us as well, and we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. Until next time, my beloved, God loves you, we love you, may God bless you, and Lord willing, if the Lord tarries is coming and we live, I'll continue this message on tomorrow night. We'll see you next time. Let's all stand for our closing prayer. Holy Father God, we thank you for what you have done, for what you're doing, for what you will do. And Lord, we thank you for pointing out our sin tonight by the power of your Holy Ghost. For Lord, this is the problem in our churches today in the church we're not taking you seriously we're taking you for granted we're not taking your word seriously we in fact do not love you as we should because we would obey you as we should so have mercy continue to have mercy and grace Lord, upon such wretched people as we are even in the church forgive us of our sins and help us to repent and to turn from our evil ways. In Jesus Christ's name we pray for sake. Amen. God bless you, dear friends. Until next time.